You're thinking about buying an EV truck. Cybertruck just came out. Woohoo! Got the Lightning, the Rivian, the Hummer. Not sure if that's a truck or not, but hey, it's big and kind of looks like one. So hey, we'll run with it. But you've got some concerns. First one's all about this range thing. Sure, 80% of people charge their vehicles at home. They're not using any kind of charging station. But what about when you go out of town? Then what do you do? You got to rely on these charging networks and you got to rely on what your vehicle's able to do at them. Cybertruck says 350 kilowatt charging rate. That's fantastic. Too bad there's not a single 350 kilowatt charging station out there. The fastest Tesla current has that most of their superchargers is 250. But what about that F-150 Lightning? It's only got 155 kilowatt. But are there any chargers out there that are faster than 150 kilowatts? So what the heck am I doing sitting here then? Let's go for a drive, shall we? First stop, Slocan City. Population, 350. What do we got going on here? Oh, we have a... <sighs> It's not a DC fast charger, it's a level two charger. Well, the good news is it's free. The bad news is you would probably have to sit in slow can, I don't know, for a day or so. Be fine, there's lots to do. Let's take a look. You could, you could go to the library. Oh, no, hold on. No, no you can't, it's, uh, it's closed. It's beautiful, gorgeous, fantastic, it's, small. It's got a lake. You could go to the lake. Uh, well, it, uh, it might be a little chilly for a swim. <laughs> it's got a great cafe. You could read a newspaper, read a couple newspapers, read a book, read War and Peace. Oh. Next up, Nelson, BC. And here we are. Population, uh, 10 or 12,000 people. Two quote unquote DC fast chargers for the entire city. 50 kilowatt. Yeah, my lightning. So it's considered slow compared to something like this, that by the way, isn't currently charging on a Tesla supercharger network because there isn't one. So they're charging on uh, this. So we have one, two, three vehicles at two charging stations. So I guess the one thing that I never have to worry about is uh, just being too slow at the DC fast chargers because the truck can handle 155 and you're looking at basically 50. Well, great news. We found a 150 kilowatt fast charger. Awesome. Uh, but it's under construction and just about to go online maybe in a day or two. Yeah, getting there. Well, that was quick. Here's the thing. I just drove to three different locations over 250 kilometers, drove right back home again, and didn't need to charge. Are these networks really that bad? Tell you what, let's drive all the way across an entire province in Canada and back again in the same day. I mean, what's the worst that could happen? Grand Forks, British Columbia. Some of the finest cutlery you'll find anywhere. Okay, not that kind of Grand Forks. It's some kind of confluence of rivers or some coming together. I don't, I don't know. I'm just making it up. I think cutlery is far more exciting. So it's showing 132 kilometers range left and 106 kilometers to my charger. This is Ford's trip planner. <laughs> Maybe don't pay attention to it. There's a lot of chargers that are showing up before that. We're not going to cut it that close. We're going to stop a little earlier. Here's a cool thing. I'm on a secondary highway. I'm driving across five mountain passes. I'm not doing it on the main highways where all your Tesla superchargers are and all that kind of stuff. I can't believe it. This tiny little place called Midway, which is, I guess, midway between anything. That would make sense. As a DC fast charger. It's not fast. It's incredibly slow. But they have one because they want you to stay for a while. There's a thing about libraries and museums. There, look over there. There's a museum. See what I mean? They would just want you to visit. It's fair. We've arrived on the outskirts of the village of Rock Creek. We have ourselves a DC fast charger. We have a level two, which is useless. Ooh, we've got a DC fast charger. And take a look at this. It's terrible parking for it, but it is 100 kilowatt. So here's the other dumbass thing about these things. They're always located at some kind of community center, chamber of commerce office, because they'd like you to come in and learn about local business and community. This one's not bad because it's actually off of the highway. Here's the thing. You got to think about it being a gas station because Rock Creek, where all the cafes and the washrooms and everything that you want to do while you're parked, several kilometers that way so this uh yeah no it's a credit union heading into osoyoos down a crazy hill the views are spectacular uh, but we're not going to get any of them. Google gives us about eight hours and 20 minutes for this trip. A lot of it's twisty, turny roads, going through mountain passes. You're often having to go quite slow. You get lots of logging trucks. Google doesn't know that I'm driving an electric truck. And it looks like we're not going to be that far off. And that's including all of our charging stops, rests, breaks, coffee. 
ablutions and uh, stuffing our face on muffins. I think this time I'm gonna give it a little bit more juice. I'm not gonna do like a five minute stop, but maybe a 15, 20 minute stop to make sure that we're good to get all the way over the next pass. And here we have it, a whole bunch of chargers. But of course we have mostly Tesla superchargers. And then we got three of these, which is not bad, but you notice how it has no information on them. And also you don't have a clue which one you're parking at. Like, is this a 50? Is this a hundred? Doesn't say anything on it, this is normal. And then you pull up to them, they got some little tiny code model number thing. So when you go into the application, it says number one, number two, or number three. And then it's got this AE 507-6864 subsection six. And you have no idea which one of the three fricking terminals you're actually standing at to charge. I just, uh, uh. Here's the thing. You see these fellows right over here? Those charge at 250 kilowatt. I cannot wait until they're available because there's no problem actually driving several hundred kilometers across across this province, no problem at all. The problem is these worthless pieces of crap. You're putting in brand new fast chargers at 50 kilowatts, which are slower than the second coming of Buddha. These things are freaking useless, especially when you're competing against this. The moment those go live, you're out of business. This is what we're seeing right across the province. So I'm not gonna stand around here waiting for these dinosaurs to charge up the vehicle. We did it for about 20 minutes, enough to get me to my next one, and then we're gonna move on. We're sitting at 117, kilometers until we're bone dry on electrons. But my charger in Princeton is 150 kilowatts, which I'm kind of happy about. And uh, I think we're gonna go for it. What do you think? I mean, we haven't really had any kind of for the whole trip. So let's, uh, let's make some. We're officially at the shortest day of the year. And in Canada, oh boy, can you tell. It's like dark all the time. This is 12 noon. I've had my first low battery indicator light come on as we arrive in Princeton. That's not bad, but I've gone into the orange. First time I've actually had that pop up in my truck ever. Let's go get some juice. Hey, thank you, Chevron. We're at their on the run, free fast superchargers. We had one of these in Castle Guard. It hadn't been set up yet. Flo, maybe you can take a lesson from a gas station that seems to have it right. They're parked on a major route and all kinds of places to eat and cafes and just basically every Everything you need, a walking park, take the dogs out. Thank you for actually showing that you have braids. Well, that sure is the right price. This is beginning to look a lot more like a mountain pass. This is kind of what I'm used to. Huh, looks like uh, any other Friday. Chevron wins again, way better than BC Hydro, than Electrify Canada, Electrify America, and a thousand and one times better than Flow, which is a nightmare. They've got 10, 12, sorry, 14 fast chargers, all 200 kilowatt in hope. So there is hope and they are all free. That's right, that is pretty impressive. We need more stuff like this. And here we are finally, lower mainland. And we're gonna head into Abbotsford. Head on back, same day. Let's do it, red eye. There you have it, 19 hours and 43 minutes, there and back again, 1,317.7 kilometers. Oh, that was just glorious. The drive back was in pitch darkness and other than fog that left visibility at zero, a sudden plunge in temperature and a sheen of ice on all the highways. <laughs> Oh yeah, and a couple of moose. Welcome. The drive back was uneventful, but lesson learned, the number of chargers and frequencies is no longer a problem where I live. And I live in a remote part of North America, but there is a huge problem, the cost of time. With charging times added in, a 16 to 18 hour trip in an internal combustion vehicle would now take 22 hours. And 100% of that can be attributed to slow, so-called fast chargers. The good news? We saw evidence that all of that is rapidly changing. Gas stations realize the coming tide of change. Third-party providers will either step up or die. And Tesla superchargers are strategically placed at all the best waypoints, which means once they open up, it's smooth sailing. The last point from a truck perspective is that absolutely none of these, zero, have taken trucks into consideration, especially those with trailers. This is where existing service stations could really corner the market, but unfortunately are following the same inherent and flawed system as everyone else. This doesn't bode well for anyone towing anything with an EV. Thank you again for watching. Please like and subscribe. And if you would like to hear my rant on the dinosaurs of charging infrastructure and how they need to change, click the link above. See you next time.